Sub doubles. J Dog back to answer more guy questions. We got two more from yesterday to finish the fuck up. Then I got two order questions for the day, and then we'll go to the next goddamn video. Brought it up, but didn't search any questions out. Just scrolled already to the bottom. Board Ant Red. Board Ant Red in the house again. God damn it. So it seems like he watches every fucking video at this point, which is cool fucking beans over here. Question. Do you like I Hate God? Question mark. They have a solid discography, especially the debut LP with the cover showcasing disease genitalia. So I Hate God, it was a band I actually never to this day given much, um, just much of a chance. Because I've always was under the impression of stoner rock. I remember hearing something, I don't remember what album, and I didn't like it. I know it was in the very early 2000s when I heard it. Hell, it might have even been before that. Because um, they were doing a show, wasn't it with DSI? That was my fucking whack job of a fucking uncle who's religious beyond your fucking imagination. Called up when we were kids. Oh, there's these bands playing. I don't remember if there's a show together or if you just saw two concerts. This is back when you saw in the newspaper. There's this band, Deicide, and I hate God. Like he's telling our dad, hopefully they're not going to that, the boys. Sure, hoping to go to Deicide, brah, brah. But I remember even saying, I hate God, don't like it then. So probably heard it then, but don't remember which one. And since I already decided that I didn't like it then, never checked anything else. And then always I heard, I was like, oh, there's stoner rock. And most anything I hear that's goddamn stoner rock doesn't sleep fall in that category, too. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, is an acid bath another one that falls in that category? I just automatically, I, matter of fact, I don't even know if I like any stoner fucking rock, stoner bands, stoner metal, stoner rock. Anything that's just figure uh, affiliated with the stoner shit, with the exception of Acid Witch. I think that's the only band that affiliated with stoner shit, unless I'm forgetting somebody, uh, that I like. So it was, that was never my, uh, never my wheelhouse, never what I was going to do. Ryan right Zerta 2, question, question marks. Bands that don't suck have never, bands that don't suck have never pushed out and have never released crap. Cannibal Corpse, Immolation, Vader, Deicide, Incantation, Christian. Some releases are stronger than others, but you can throw on any album from these bands and listen front to back. Do you, do you agree, goddammit? I know, I know you do, goddammit. I mean, I would say every one of those bands to this day is definitely respectable. Um, I can't say of all those bands, I love every single record. Like, for me, um, Chrissy and I like every album. The only Chrissy album I kind of, wouldn't say I didn't, didn't like, but definitely I thought was the worst, was the, um, fuck, it was like the third from the fourth of the bottom, Forged and Fury, is that what it is? I, I own it, too, just kind of like complete the collection. Um, is it called Forged and Fury? Uh, it's on the tip of my fucking tongue. Might be that one. That was, I thought, I remember like Alex's voice kind of even sounded like a little bit more like thrashy, like wasn't even as brutal. <sighs> I remember that, like, not the least, but uh, other albums like Assassination and Southern Storm. There'd be uh, parts here that even the new album as a whole, I like them. There's definitely parts I'm like, yeah, I don't really like this part. But as a whole, I liked every fucking album. Um, Score to the Enthroned, thought that was good. That was the second to last one, right? And then what's the one that is a double LP? Uh, it's on the tip of my fucking tongue. Uh, it's got Blood of Lions on there. That was good. Um, Works of Carnage. I like everything on that one. Uh, so for the most part, yes, I agree. And bands uh, like Incantation, for example, no album sucks. And they definitely stuck to their guns, but they definitely have songs to where it's a little too slow, doomy, and boring for me. Hell, even Mortal Throne on Nazarene, which I think is an absolute death metal fucking masterpiece. The last track, I didn't like too much. The first track on Mortal Throne of Apocalypse, it was just long and drawn out. If it, if it was down to like two and a half, three minutes, it would have been a cool track. But, um, so there's songs that I didn't care for. But they stayed true to their style because the slower, doomier stuff that even, that I, did, that I didn't like on some of the uh, later albums too, they always had that. That was in their, that, that was part of their style. Stay true. The aside, like I said, you guys know I like every album, but Till Death Do His Part, I like it more these days than when it came out. When I first came out, I, I was like, I don't like this at all. Um, but it, it grew on me. It's definitely my least favorite. Yes, I even like Incinerate Them and In Torment in Hell, which are their half ass records to get off Roadrunner. I like those albums more than uh, uh, Till Death Do His Part. I think Two Bell Do His Part is their worst album, but again, still kind of a, um, I own it and I, and I like it. 
as opposed to some bands just complete trash fucking central, you know, Tiamat, and shit like that. Like we, bands we talked about a million fucking times, Metallica, they just put out complete fucking garbage, you know? So yeah, I agree. But, but uh, it's funny because you bring a lot of those bands up, but those are some of the bands in the death metal scene that they're ripped on by more of the Cavalt guys that I bring up, but they'll never bring up like Iron Maiden or something. I'm like, if you like every Iron Maiden record, I don't even think that's unacceptable. I can understand that's, but it's like that to me is 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 not as is just as outlandish as saying any of those bands that you mentioned. Fucking, uh, it's just it's just the same thing. Like kind of bands that haven't haven't um they stuck to their fucking what they set out to do. Um, but some people look at you like, oh man, you like every Vader album? I'm like, how is that outlandish, man? Like, there's no, none of them are drastically different. It was a pretty goddamn consistent band. But yeah, like you said, some are better than others. You know, if somebody says they like every Maiden album. Do they like the last one as much as Killers? I mean, highly fucking doubt it. It's like, yeah, it's, I like every one, but yeah, exactly. Some are better than others. Just like I like every single Cannibal Corpse album, like you said. Uh, but yeah, do I think Violence on the Magic is as good as Tomb of Mutilated? Fuck no. But uh, I still thought it was a good record. So yeah, I would agree. I think all those bands uh, completely stuck to their fucking guns and are, and are still respectable to date in my, in my book. First goddamn order question of the day. Jacob Lay. What up, Brad? Rock? Question for you: Will Hell's ever do another run of those Hell's head head comp LPs again? Question mark. You know that crossed my mind too. I, I just keep forgetting to bring it up. Um, if we were to do it, I especially would like to do it for the um, the current one, the Cannibal Corpse one, just for that goddamn cover art alone. Um, I can't even remember how many of the LP ones did we did. We did the didn't we just do the ones on LP? The one with the Slayer cover and then the Black Sabbath cover, right? I mean, those two, I'd have to go look at my personal shit. I don't even know what's on my head. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'd be up for it. Um, so, and have you ever seen Negative Approach live before? No, nope, I have not. And I would like to. Uh, my favorite hardcore band of all goddamn time. They played in Cleveland a couple times and it was always one of those things. Nobody told me to last minute. And I couldn't make it. Quick story, which reminded me of an old Hellcast episode. I took the train home one day and some bald-headed middle-aged sunglass wearing tough guy headphones off cranks for all of us for all of us to enjoy was down with the shitness yep i remember when that came out didn't know that big of a of a canoe could fit on a train <laughs> any other any other deicide stickers i'll send you a deicide sticker in your order bro bro yeah i have some left you're definitely getting out of the goddamn bottom of the barrel off. no that's for goddamn sure maybe 12 left or so because i only hand those out to people that ask for them Next goddamn uh, question is from Michael Hedrick. Question for the YouTube channel. One, any interest in releasing early nuclear blast titles that have been out of print for a long time, like Monstrosities, Righteous Pigs, Defecation, Afflicted, Revenant, CD and or Vinyl? Question mark. Out of all those, the main one I'd be interested in is Monstrosity. Special, man, imagine an Imperial Doom LP at Hells. I mean, that would just be a, um, just a... Uh, sense of pride of being able to put that classic out and yeah fuck i mean because i own the original lp of that and i own a 12 inch picture disc of it and then the cd as well but the uh lp to my knowledge the only pressing that's out there is the original and it's it's shit too like it's one of those if i remember correctly it doesn't even have a spine it's one of the thin ones where there's no there's literally no spine like the the, the, the uh, band name and the title and I remember the vinyl being really flimsy, like one of the Brazilian pressing plants, which are, to my knowledge, all closed down. I'm not saying it was pressed in Brazil, but if any of you guys remember, a lot of the records that were pressed in uh, Brazil, they had like one plant for sure, maybe even a couple. And I remember in the early 2000s when it got announced, all the vinyl press pressing plants in Brazil closed down. I was personally happy as fuck when they did because you would get them like, dude, these are dog shit in quality. They would literally be thin. You'd be handled. Feel like the fucking thing was gonna break in your goddamn hand. But this is how the monstrosity is. And then you'd also have these little divots. Like it's like uh, how do, it's like it wasn't it wasn't a scratch. Put in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. If you have one of those presses, it was almost like a little bit of a bump. Not every time in the actual middle of the record, and it would pop every time. And when it hit that part of the thing, it was just the vinyl was junk. The monstrosities that type of quality of vinyl. And then the, uh, I think it also has no insert as well. So, and to my knowledge, that the picture this, those are the, that's the only vinyl pressing out there because even in the early 2000s, labels like Back on Black, 
they're reissuing everything under the goddamn sun. I don't think they ever did that one. Now, I could be wrong. If, if there's a reissue other than that, I, I just don't have it. I'm unaware of it. So if it's, j Dog, you dumbass, it's possible. I, well, I got an original, goddamn it. Crappy original, but got it. Um, so I just didn't come across it. So that's all the more, to me, uh, a vinyl pressing would be very just to do. And uh, I, personally, I'd want to do it on a gateful cover, some type of color vinyl, definitely with a poster, because that's a, that's a classic of classics. That's, to me, you say you like death metal, I, it's automatically assumed in my mind that you like Imperial Doom. Automatically assumed. Uh, I, it's not even something I go around asking. It's just, if I hear you don't, I just look at you like you're fucking stupid. I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? Like, when I go walking out, and if I see, just saw on the gas station the other day, which you don't see it, of course, he didn't say nothing. Uh, I think I was wearing a, what shirt was I wearing? The fuck was I wearing? This was like three days ago. God damn it, what was I wearing? Uh, it was a more underground band, but nothing super obscure. Like, it wasn't Cannibal. Fuck, who was I wearing? God damn it. Anyways, guy was wearing a, uh, never seen him before, of course. Like, at shows and shit. He was, he was wearing a great gate creeper hood. He didn't say nothing to me. Means he didn't fucking recognize the fucking T. He didn't recognize the goddamn band. I didn't even get the fucking head nod. So you could just tell, just deer and headlights sticking in the mouth, just like some modern shit came across them. But if we were talking, if we talk, I would, I would shot Max soon. Own Imperial Doom, brah. Like Imperial Doom, brah. If I get this shit, take a fight, fucking hype, brah, brah. So yeah, we'd love to do that on fucking vinyl, goddamn it. Two, how about telling the Hell's Bells story on the channel, question mark? Maybe some of the devils haven't heard that one. Even if they have, it's worth repeating. Thanks. I'll be honest with you, that whole Hell's Bells shit, that, that was all crazy deal. I don't even, I met the guy like once, maybe one and a half times. It wasn't even, a, it wasn't even a, uh, it wasn't even an official meet. It was Craig kind of just talking to the guy in the background. I didn't think it was as funny as he did. I was like, yeah, this is some jackass fucking hillbilly. That uh, he was one of those guys that like thought he was into music. Maybe not saying that he likes metal, but that, but he, cause he like, yeah, he likes ACDC, he likes Led Zeppelin. But again, he's probably one of those guys. Again, I didn't even confirm it because when Craig was getting off and talking to him and recording him, it's like, dude, like, why? why? This guy's just some dumb fucking hillbilly. I've mean, I met tons of these guys. Just, just some, I don't even want to talk to him. I literally, I'm busy. I don't got time to talk to this fucking jackass. Um, but he's one of those guys. That he'll talk about, like, yeah, the good old days. All, but he, when I told you, but never even heard of Venom, never even heard of Merciful Fate. Again, I did I ask him? No, so I can't say with 100% certainty that that specific individual named Hell's Bells, I don't even know what his real name fucking was. It's always heard Craig talking about him. Uh, I, I didn't confirm it, but he's one of those, but he, he fell in that. Because remember that story I told? Putting these guys, talk to them, and like they're talking about music and how they're into shit, but they haven't heard of Venom or, or Merciful Fate. It's like, well, wait a minute, dude. I could just do the math. I know, because you're out roughly around my dad's age and shit. In 1980 and stuff, dude, you were young. You were like 20 to 25 to 26, somewhere like there. And the only fucking musical format that was around to buy was vinyl records. So you were buying records still at that time. If you're as big as a fucking music fan, you couldn't download it. You couldn't YouTube it, nothing like that. It was just more common, even for the average person, to buy records. So what does that mean? It means you were in a goddamn record store. And if you like anything from hard rock to somewhat heavy metal, like you're saying you do, and you never even heard Venom, Fate, how could you not? Dude, you would have accidentally even flipped through it at the record store. And you're just completely clueless. That's how you know they're not music goddamn fans. That's just that that's a different crowd of the uh of the younger bucks that we talk about. Their generation, but the older generation fucking posers where they're trying to like school you on music. It's like, dude, there's no reason like why something like Welcome to Hell or goddamn Melissa, that shouldn't have been up your goddamn alley. It, it, just, it just isn't. Um, they weren't even interested in checking it out. Guy working on the bike, working on the car in the garage, listening to fucking radio. What do we establish over here? Radio equals non music fan. Real music fans. Don't listen to the fucking radio. Why? Because they're spinning CDs and LPs. They ain't got time for the stupid ass radio. Who the hell wants Doritos commercials and Pepsi commercials and all this other bullshit in between their tune skis? And meanwhile, next up, Black Sabbath, War Pigs. Yay, you never fucking heard that. I want to hear the whole album. Blah, blah. 
And quite frankly, War Pigs wasn't even the best goddamn song on the album. I mean, even if it was, if you thought it was, I've heard it 10 trillion billion buck of times, as opposed to the other songs, I haven't. So yeah, not a goddamn music fan. Thanks, goddamn video and live questions. It's on the video. J Dog's introduction to hemorrhage. That goddamn video. Over the bottom. Ah, four from the bottom. Here we go. PF, question marks. Hey, J-Dog, you often mention hemorrhage and general surgery. Do you like dead infection? Question mark. I mentioned, I've talked about dead infection on this channel. Yes, I do. My favorite thing uh, by dead infection is there are two demos. World Full of Remains and Start Human Slaughter. Those fucking things were way ahead of their time. The thing is about dead in, uh, infection is they were uh, another gore grind band, which gore grind was very scarce at the time. If you put it in, in uh, perspective, you know, the late 80s, early 90s. And they didn't sound anything like the others. The only gore grind, how many, you didn't have too many gore grind bands out there at the time. I mean, obviously the one that started it was um, Carcass, in my opinion. But then you had Empatago, you had General Surgery. General Surgery was just a complete direct, intentional uh, pay homage or rip off to Carcass. But you, you put out Dead Infection and another gore grind band, it sounded nothing like the Carcass style at all. Because generally speaking, when bands were trying to carry out the uh, gore grind stuff, you got bands like Hemorrhage coming along. It was because influenced by Carcass. But that infection, it was just brutal and grit and raw in its own style. Like just overly, there's not too much shit that you're going to find that's more brutal than that infection where they started. Like go back that time frame. The only thing that's, that's, that's hanging out with it is Recomputrefaction. Trying to think of the years. There's not too much shit that's more goddamn brutal. Because I take, for example, the first Cannibal Corpse or whatever. That's not more brutal than Dead Infection. Now, I like the first Cannibal more as a whole. But as far as just pure brutality and, like, holy fuck, extremity for the time, there's not too many bands that were more extreme than Dead Infection. But, yeah, like I said, favorite thing is definitely the, the two demos. Uh, Star Demon Slaughter, Wolf Full Remains. And then my favorite albums that did debuts, Surgical Disembowelment. And after that, a lot of the other albums, the, uh, what's the, uh, one in space, Lost in Space, Corpus in Space, I think it was Ralph Elf over at Haunted Hell. So I was like, you know, you gotta check those ones out. I just lost touch. I never checked them out. I thought they would be bad because they looked silly. I'm like, what the fuck is goddamn corpse in a fucking astronaut suit? I just thought that shit was kind of dumb. So I just, I just didn't check it out, to be completely honest with you. I just, I just judged a book by its cover. But some guys, oh, dude, it's all good. But, uh, for sure, I like the early stuff, for sure. I like it, and I know it, God damn it. So, yeah, no, Dead Infection. Oh, yeah, dude. Dude, and no Deathcore fucking poser-ass fucking canoe is going to put that on. That's going to make his pussy fucking ache. He ain't going to be able to handle that extremity. No way, no how. Ryan and Zerta 2, God damn it. Pretty much every fucking video. Jay Dizzle. Nothing chats my fucking ass harder <laughs> when I can't find something I know I own. That pisses me off like No Tomorrow 2, actually. The other day, I was looking for a CD that I have had for probably 20 fucking years. Yep, 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 been there. And it's, and it's magically gone. Yep, that's that's like my goddamn uh, Empatago CDs that magically disappeared here at fucking Hells. Bring in your disc. We're doing reissues. They need to get something from it, some info or whatever. Gave it to Craig. And then fucking Craig gave it to fucking Eric. Go back two weeks later. Craig, where's my Empatago CDs? So I gave him to fucking Eric. All right, goddamn it. Well, Eric's get here. There's, where's my goddamn Empatago CDs? I don't know. I'll just Craig deal. Go back to Craig. He's so full of shit. I gave him to him. MIA had to go out and buy them again. Fuck yeah. Thanks, guys. So, know what you mean. Magically fucking gone. Now I look at Discogs and people want like 50 bucks for a copy. God damn it. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Sure does raise the gold blood pressure. Been there. Gordon Sele. Question. Are you familiar with the punk band Sloppy Seconds? Yes, I am. They are one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorites in the punk genre. I don't, uh, I don't think I, I might own enough. I don't think I own anything by them, but they I've definitely uh YouTube them and shit like that. It was actually Kanye that told me to check them out when I was just getting into punk. You know, when he saw, oh, you like the Misfits, you like Dead Kennedys, things like that. I checked them out. Uh I definitely enjoyed their songs that I thought were good, and there were songs I didn't like. Um they kind of put them in the Ramones category too. Like, because the Ramones, I I like a good Probably more than 20 songs by their moans. I probably like more. But they definitely have songs. Like, I don't like this at all. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. They have songs like, dude, this is fucking bad. Um, but they definitely had songs I liked. And Sloppy Seconds, they definitely had songs I enjoyed too. For sure. Life Eternal question marks. Who's the band USA Distro for High Roller Records repressing? Shipping 
from them direct as killer. Um, I, I, maybe us. I don't know if we get everything by high roller, but goddamn, we get a shitload of stuff in from him. Um, to be honest, I don't know a lot of the reissues he does. Like he did, like uh, the sacrifice, and he even did Exodus and Possessed. Um, he's done a few one offs that I like. Most of the stuff, I, it's not my thing. I mean, a lot of it's just kind of like just old guy dad metal for me. Uh, with some of the obscure bands, so it's not really my thing. So I don't pay much attention to the label. So if there does a lot of other releases that we don't get in, it's news because I don't, I don't look. I don't, I don't. It's just not my wheelhouse. I don't really care. I'd rather, I'd rather listen to Hemorrhage. You know what I mean? So, but I know we get shit his stuff in by the box fools. But are we only getting the classic shit that's going to sell? That that's a chase question. I don't know. I'm not the one that deals with them. That's uh, chase something like that. Get one more 21 minutes. We'll get one more quickie in here, goddammit. Ginzer Chuck, Pestilence is making is still making albums, but they don't seem to get talked about talked about all that much. What's your take on the band? Personally, I like the first two demos and first four albums the, the best, but their newer newer stuff is decent. I'll be honest, Pestilence was one of those bands, and I have mentioned on this channel, that I never cared much about at all. I thought the demos sounded much like kind of like from what I remember possessed. And I was like, Possessed is just better. The albums never got in. And I never got, we'll go back to it. I was talking to Athena. I was like, oh, dude, like the uh, Malice, Malicarium, or however the fuck you pronounce it, and Consuming Impulse, you should go back to those. So I listened to them like twice in my life. I remember both times I didn't like them. Um, the only person I agree with, granted, just, you know, he pretty much doesn't like anything, is uh, Down of the Dead. When I was like, dude, that pestilence junk. Oh, just it's just that junk 90s garbage. <laughs> granted, but that's not... I don't take I take that opinion with a goddamn grain of salt because it's the goddamn same thing about pretty much everything from the goddamn nineties. But uh yeah, I just remember not liking anything by uh pestilence. Um and talked about shit. If, uh, they, every other channel probably talks about it because goddamn when we get them in, they fly out the fucking door, fucking flies on shit. So I just assumed I was the only guy in the fucking scene. As a matter of fact, yeah, like I said, other than Don, I don't think I've ever met anyone that doesn't like goddamn pestilence. At least like the first couple. Again, I don't hate them. I'm just like, eh. I'd rather listen to Dismember, I'd rather listen to Grotesque, I'd rather listen to Deceased. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, you know, it was cool background, but uh, so I didn't think like this fucking blows chuck chucking out the window. How's anyone like this junk? It's just, you know, didn't blow my goddamn socks off. You know what I mean? That's all. Comes with the shirts, you know, look at you. Put the cotton pots, get you in the morning. Later, goddamn it. <laughs> 